Hamilton. This is your evening news update for Thursday, January 27. So glad you could join us. Health officials have already made moves to secure doses of the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine for children between the ages of 5 to 11. Word of this from Chief Medical Officer, the Most Honorable Dr. Kenneth George, who told Barbados Today the Ministry of Health and Wellness decided to secure the vaccines after the green light was given by the World Health Organization. Dr. George says there was a mixed response to the vaccine among older students. He added that health officials will soon be meeting with education authorities to discuss protocols that will facilitate the restart of face-to-face -face classes on February 21. The director of the Pan American Health Organization, Dr. Carissa Etienne, is concerned that children are facing the worst educational crisis ever seen in the region. At her weekly press briefing, she lamented that millions of children are yet to return to the classroom. She maintained that virtual learning cannot replace face-to-face -face instruction. And we think today that children go without in-person schooling, the greater the likelihood that they drop out and never return to school, leading to lifelong consequences. Additionally, the mental and psychological health of children and adolescents is being significantly affected, which may result in long-term consequences. But we know what it takes to address these problems. The first and most important thing countries can try to do for kids is to get them safely back to school to protect, to protect their social, mental, and physical well-being. In today's COVID-19 update, 767 new cases of the viral illness, 357 males and 410 females, were confirmed from 2,752 tests conducted on Wednesday by the Best Santos Public Health Laboratory. The number of people in isolation facilities is 113, while 8,415 were in home isolation. The death toll remains at 277. Central Bank Governor Cleveston Haynes is hoping that the long-awaited upgrade and expansion of the automated clearinghouse will take place by the middle of this year. The ACH, which handles both checks and direct payments, allows customers to carry out banking transactions in real time. He told a press conference on Wednesday that two of the island's five commercial banks have signed on so far, and he's hoping that other banks, along with the larger credit unions, will sign on soon. Because what do we want to see as it relates to financial services? We want to be able to generate a framework that leads to low-cost financial services. And we believe that the ACH is one of the building blocks to enable our financial institutions to be able to offer cheaper financial services than, than we currently have. Um, so the first phase is, com is complete, uh, where I think two of the banks are now able to do uh, you know, transactions real time, but two is not sufficient because those two may not be your bank. And, and therefore we need to be able to get the other banks and the credit unions, the credit unions are also working, the big credit unions are also working to be uh, brought into the ACH. Previously they were not. And so they're all working to be able to, to do that. And There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I'm Onika. I am a mother. I'm a daughter and I'm a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. 
I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional news, the Guyana government has presented a massive $552.9 billion budget, which will see government spending more. But economist Richard Rambaran says there's no need for concern. Through this budget, the government proposes to spend nearly 50% more money than it spent through the 2021 budget. But economist Richard Rambaran says that the government is spending more without increasing debt. He spoke to the newsroom during a post-budget forum on Wednesday. Debt is still at a stable as well as a sustainable point mm -hmm. where the future generations are not burdened. Mm -hmm. So overall, um, given the architecture that we have in Guyana, I think it's very important that the government has been able to craft this budget in a manner that it's being done in a fiscally responsible way mm -hmm. so as to not pressure the future generations. Mm -hmm. A fiscal deficit occurs when the government spends more than it earns, and though Dr. Singh said Guyana has a 7% fiscal deficit or debt, Rambran argued that this is a reasonable level. And he explained that the government has been able to avoid accumulating additional debt because it is tapping into the Natural Resource Fund, which currently has about US $607 million, or just less than $127 billion Guyana dollars. Further afield, Russia said on Thursday it's clear the United States was not willing to address its main security concerns in their standoff over Ukraine. However, both sides are keeping the door open to further dialogue. One day after the U.S. hand-delivered a response to Russia regarding its security concerns, Moscow on Thursday said it was clear the U.S. was not willing to address the most critical among them. As delicate negotiations continue, Russia remains steadfast in its demand that post-Cold War security arrangements in Europe be redrawn. Specifically, Russia is insisting that NATO halt any further enlargement, bar Ukraine from ever joining the alliance, and pull back forces and weaponry from Eastern European countries that entered NATO after the Cold War. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov doubled down on Moscow's position Thursday. As for the main question, there is no positive reaction to it in the document. The main question is our clear message that we consider further NATO expansion to the east in weapons deployment, which can threaten the Russian Federation unacceptable. But a day earlier, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, while not disclosing the specifics of the U.S. response, made it clear that blocking the expansion of NATO was a non-starter. NATO's door is open, remains open, uh, and uh, that is our commitment. Meanwhile, Russia has continued military drills near its border with Ukraine, where it has massed some 100,000 troops, provoking Western fears of an invasion. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov on Thursday said Moscow needed time to review the U.S. document, as well as one submitted by NATO, and would not rush to conclusions, but that the responses to Russia's key demands did not leave much room for optimism. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.